my duty to ensure that the mail is officially opened. It's not going to take long, is it? No. Just as soon as I find my official letter opener... <laughs> now, where is it? Have you seen it? Seen what? My letter opener, the one Stan sent me for Christmas. He filed it down from a sheep shin bone. <laughs> oh, well. I suppose if you run out of letters to open, you can always boil it down and make soup out of it. Here it is. Thank God. Now we can get on with officially opening the mail. Yes. <laughs> oh, you'll never guess what happened to Helga. Betty, the mail. Honey, I'm so pleased for her. I'm not going to get to see my mail until I ask, am I? No. Very well. <clears throat> what has happened to Helga and why are you so pleased for her? She's engaged. I'm delirious. Now give me the mail. Uh, Just a minute. She's already engaged. Well, this is a new engagee. Oh. Well, what happened to the other one? When did you break off with him? She didn't. You mean she's engaged to two different people? Well, no, it's only temporary until she makes up her mind. You know, Helga, she can never say no to anyone. Oh, really? Not about important things like engagements. Have you finished opening the mail? No. Fine, then I'll have it. Anyway, there aren't any real ones. They're all mostly windows. Yeah, you're right. Hang on a second, there's one here for Nudge. What's that doing here? Nudge? Yeah, Mr Kelly? There's a letter here for you. Oh, thanks. But it's addressed to your house. Why did Helga deliver it here? Because she knows that's where I'll be. <laughs> Besides, Dad, she can't find the letterbox at Nudge's. Why not? Because the grass is too long. <laughs> Nudge, has it ever occurred to you to cut it? Well, why should I do that? So she can deliver your mail to your letterbox. Well, there's not much point in that, is there? Why not? Because I'm always here. <laughs> and he gets through you. Besides, Dad, didn't you know grass screams when you cut it? Yeah, and I'm not going to cause pain to any living thing. And why do you keep turning up to my house? <laughs> anyway, grass grows, it does not scream. It does, it's a known fact. Oh, I've never heard it. That's because your motor mower makes too much noise. <laughs> but, it, but it's down there going... <laughs> and I don't want to be responsible. Nothing but bills here, Dad. Yeah, I might have known it. This, this one's from the dentist. Oh, yeah, that was Jenny. <laughs> 30 bucks. There's nothing wrong with her teeth. She's been on fluoride since the moment we thought she was conceived. <laughs> He's charged me 30 bucks to tell me she didn't need to go to the dentist. Why did you take her? Well, I thought I might get lucky and she'd need a root canal job to make my trip worthwhile. <laughs> What's that one? Electricity. 130 bucks. That's a lot, isn't it? No, it's perfectly normal for this house. You know why? Because nobody ever turns off lights. They're left blazing day and night. Oh, Dad. No, you never turn anything off. I mean, look at you. You've got the TV blaring now. We're watching it. What are you watching at this time of the morning? Romper room. <laughs> Romper room? Yeah, keep it down, will you? Mr Doobie's about to tell us something. <laughs> Mr Doobie. Oh, yeah, he's terrific. He can fly and talk at the same time. But you can't do that. I don't want to do that. Oh, here you are, we're going to sing. Ready, Ready, Ready Mr. Music. Bounce, bounce, bounce your ball. Bounce up to the sky. Bounce, bounce, bounce your ball. See it bounce so high. <laughs> I don't believe it. Somebody's opened a tin of morons in my living room. Hang on, here's my favourite bit. What's that? Milk and cookie time. <laughs> oh, there you are. I want to talk to you. Lucky I turned up. What time did you get home last night? Just now? You mean you've been out all night? No, I stayed over. I rang Tiffany's and you weren't there. That's because I stayed over at Sophie's. Sophie? Who's Sophie? She's the girl I stayed with. Debbie, don't be smart. You know the rules. If you stay out, you ring in. Well, yeah, I was going to, Dad, but we got talking and then it was 2 o'clock in the morning and I didn't want to ring you then. After all, you're entering into your heart years, you know. In future, ring in. Got it? Got it. Good. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Betty, if you value your life, stop singing that song. Oh, don't you like it? I thought it was rather cheerful. I don't need cheerful. I've got an armload of bills here to pay. Oh, here's another one for you, and it's not a bill. Hallelujah. Could it be a cheque? Oh, no, it's from Morgan Developments. The people you did the submission for? Yeah, yeah, the townhouses. I wonder if they like my ideas. Damn, they hated them. What do you mean? Well, take a look. They didn't hate them, they said they liked them. Look, the choice was extremely difficult, and we thank you for your excellent submission. They liked it. Unfortunately, we have decided to proceed with another plan. They hated them. Oh, you sort of came second then, didn't you? Betty, there is no second prize. Oh, well, that's not fair. Don't you even get a chook or something? What? Oh, 
more like than the chocolate wheel of Walgett. We always gave a second price, you know, a chook or, or sometimes a ham or something. Betty, unfortunately, this is not a chocolate wheel. This is big business and I was really depending on the work. Oh, well, something else would turn up. Yeah, something else had better. Hi, Dad, where you been? Oh, I had to go to a meeting. Oh, well, listen, this isn't romper room again, is it? No, nah, romper room's for little kids. This is much more adult. Yeah, what is it? Play school. <laughs> what makes you think play school is more adult than romper room? Well, there's more adults in it. Well, you're working your way up, I suppose. Oh, oh we were just about to see Big Ted. <laughs> listen, I hesitate to ask this, but you two aren't thinking about sitting around for the rest of your lives and doing nothing, are you? No, we've got something going. Oh, good. What is it? We're going to start a basketball team. That's not what I had in mind. I was thinking more in terms of jobs. You've heard of jobs, haven't you? You know, you go out, you do work, they give you money, you come home and you give some to me. Don't, don't panic, I'll get a job. I've got a job, Mr Kelly. What, you mean someone's paying you to sit in my living room and watch play school? <laughs> no, I don't start till next week. Always wanted to live on the edge of adventure. What do you want about? My job. I'm going to be out there in the rough, tough world. I'm a shock troop in the battle of big business and money. Yeah? What are you going to be doing? I'm going to be a bank teller. <laughs> you can't even add up. Well, that's no problem. I figure if it gets too hard, I'll send the customers out to the auto bank. <laughs> They're a great idea, aren't they? Yeah, well, at least you're doing something. What about you, Simon? I'm starting next week too, Dad. Oh, you're starting a job next week? Well, not exactly. Well, what exactly? I'm starting to look for a job next week. <laughs> Simon... Dad, don't sweat it. There's hundreds of jobs in the papers every day. Yeah, and there are thousands of kids your age out there applying for them every day. You've got to get off your backside and do something. I told you, I'm doing something. I'm playing basketball. That's not exactly a career move. Oh, Jenny, what are you doing? Making something. Oh, Simon, come in here. Yes, Dad. Did you let her do this? Dad, you got me. I got up first thing this morning and I said to Jenny, why don't you go and destroy the kitchen? <laughs> Of course I didn't let her do it. Listen, if you hadn't had your head stuck in the television, you might have noticed what she was up to. What are you up to, Jen? Making something. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> what is it? Tomato. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Jenny, you must have 30 kilos of plasticine in your room. Why are you making Play-Doh? Because I'm bored. Of course you're bored. It's the school holidays. Dude. Look, why why don't you go and visit a friend? Can't. All my friends have gone away. Where have your friends gone, Jen? Samantha's gone to France, Jackie's gone to Hawaii, and Robin's gone to Aspen. France, Hawaii, Aspen? Whatever happened to Woi Woi? <laughs> Maybe it's closed, closed. <laughs> Look, tell me, Jen, are all your friends millionaires or just stowaways? I don't know. Why don't we ever go anywhere good? We went to Noosa last Easter and we saw the big pineapple. It was great, remember? Dad, the giant pineapple doesn't exactly stack up against the Eiffel Tower. Did someone mention pineapples? That's what I need to clean out my mouth. I'll force feed you a pineapple and it won't be in your mouth. Oh, that's a bit rough. It certainly is. Now, Jenny, I have something for you to do. What? Clean up this mess. Go on, mate, let's go and practice basketball. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Jen, do you want to come and watch me dribble? I think I'd rather clean up. <laughs> oh, there you are. How was the meeting? Interesting. Uh, as a matter of fact, Betty, there's something I want to tell you about the meeting. Oh, good. What's good? Well, I like surprises. What makes you think it's going to be a surprise? Well, do I already know it? No. Then it's a surprise. <laughs> as I said, I like surprises. Yeah, well, I don't know that you're going to like this one. Oh, then it's a shock. That's a surprise you don't like. Mm. Well, anyway, Betty... Should I sit si down? You are sitting down. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, should I stand up then? Betty! Then, if I need to, I can sit down again. Betty, don't sit down. Oh. Don't stand up. <laughs> Betty, please, will you just be quiet for a minute? Oh, all right. Well, tell me, what's the surprise? Well, I just went and saw this old friend of mine. He's a partner in a big architectural firm. Oh, that's anyway. nice. Hmm. Anyway, he told me... How that... was he? Hey? Oh, he was fine. Anyway, he Do told... I know him? No, you don't. Betty, please, this isn't easy. Well, go on, stop interrupting yourself. <laughs> he offered me a job. <laughs> what are you laughing for? Well, that's silly, isn't it? I mean, I mean, you've already got a job here with me. Betty, I don't know whether you've noticed this, but things haven't been going too well lately. 
Oh, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Kelly, but I try my best. No, 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 oh, Betty, it's, it's not you. It's not you. It's just, it's just the jobs aren't coming in. I was really depending on that townhouse project. But, but we've got lots of work. Look, I've got Yeah, but not big jobs, just little bits and pieces, revisions. There's not enough money in them. Gee, well, I didn't know things were as bad as that. Well, you should have said. Yes, I know, but I was hoping things would pick up. Look, Betty, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to look for another job. You mean you're firing me? No, I'm not firing you. It's just that, well, I can't see that we can afford to keep the business going. Well, well, if it had helped out, I, I could work for nothing for a while until things were, got better. Oh, no, Betty, that's very kind of you, but that won't solve the problem. Look, I really think I'm going to have to take this job I've been offered. You mean get a real job? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Dad, I've cleaned up the kitchen. What can I do now? Oh, you can go and clean up yourself, <laughs> but not in the bathroom. Get your brother to hose you. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> Yes, Dad. Will you go and hose your sister down? OK, Dad, can you lend me 20 bucks? Lend? Yeah. Me? Lend? You? Yeah, I'll pay you back. How? How? What are you, some kind of red Indian? <laughs> uh, how are you going to pay me back the $20? No, I'll get a job. Simon, I want the money back before 1990. Dad, I told you I'll get a job and I'll pay you back. You can make it a bicentennial grant. <laughs> I might as well. It's going to take me 200 years to get the money back anyway. All right, there you go. How long is that going to last you? Oh, about ten minutes. I'm going to buy a basketball. Thanks, Dad. Why are you buying the basketball? Why can't Nudge buy the basketball? Don't be silly, Mr. Kelly. My dad hasn't got 20 bucks. <laughs> See? Money goes out all the time. I can't afford to take my kids on a decent holiday. Can't afford to take them on a lousy holiday. Well, it's not your fault, Mr. Kelly. Besides, what are the kids going to do if you're not here? Oh, they don't need me around anymore. I mean, they're almost grown up. Anyway, Deborah's hardly ever here. Simon's getting himself a job, one of these eons. What about Jenny? Yeah, well, I'll manage this somehow. But at least I'll be able to do things for her. Maybe you're right. Would you like a cup of tea? Betty, Betty, you don't need to use the intercom to ask me that. I know. I just wanted to give it one last go. I'd love some tea, thanks. Oh, don't throw that around the house. Yeah, Dad. <laughs> See you later, guys. Hang on, we're coming with you. No way. No, you really want to come? You are going to netball practice, aren't you? That's right, and you're not coming. Why not? Because you'll just stand around and leer at the girls and embarrass me. Yeah, that is one of perv on the girls. <laughs> you don't use language like that. Well, they do. I know, but don't use language like that. Simon does. Yes, but that's because Simon is a sexist clod. <laughs> Thanks very much. Nothing. Anyway, we're not coming to Perth. Simon. Well, we're not coming to be sexist clods. <laughs> No, we just want to pick up some tips. Tips? What for? For basketball. We don't know much about the game. Well, here's something you should know. I play netball. Same thing? It is not. Of course it is. Everyone knows they're the same except in netball. You can't crash tackle. <laughs> you can't do that in basketball either. Well, there you are. They're exactly the same. <laughs> Hang on. If we can't crash tackle, how do we get the ball? With skill and agility. Oh, I think we've got a problem. <laughs> I'm playing basketball too, Deb. You got her playing too? No, she was bored, so we made a cheerleader. Yeah, what do I have to do again, Nudge? Well, you get up and turn somersaults and that every time we score a goal. Are you going to ring me? Ring you? What for? Well, I'm not going to wait around in a drafty hall for you guys to score a goal. Freezing my bum off. Jenny! <laughs> don't use language like that. Well, where'd you learn that? You said it. Well, that's different. Why? Because I'm a bloke and I'm older than uh -huh. you. And I'll tell Dad if you say it again. Anyway, it's not fair. What's not fair? Everything. Well, that just about covers it. <laughs> just a minute, you lot. Oh, hi, Dad. I'm just off to netball. Yeah, we're going along to Perv. I mean, work. <laughs> and what time are you going to be home tonight? I don't know, Mr. Kelly. What time would you like me home? <laughs> I don't want you home any time. I'm talking to Deborah. Dad, it's only netball. I'll be home at the normal hour. What, tomorrow morning? <laughs> well, I can't do a thing right, can I? First of all, I don't ring you and you're mad at me. Then last night I rang you and you're mad again. You rang me at 2 o'clock in the morning. I didn't want you to worry. I was worried till 1.30 and then I fell asleep until the phone rang. And then I was awake all night, worried that I wouldn't get to sleep again. And I was right to. Why? Because I didn't. I was awake all night. Oh, well, that explains it then. Explains what? Why are you so scratchy today? I'll give you scratchy. Dad, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to ring you or not? I want you to be home at a reasonable hour, or I want you to phone at a reasonable hour if you're staying with someone. Fine, 
mine. And I want to know who they are. And their passport number and star sign. That's enough out of you. You're just getting a little bit free and easy with these smart remarks lately. Oh, come on, Dad. I'm not a little girl anymore. All right, we'll try this. Home by 11, no argument. Dad? That sounds reasonable to me. Does it? Fine. You can be home by 11 too. <laughs> That's not fair. Ridiculous. Tough. You kids have really been getting on my wick lately. You traipse in and out of here at any hour. You don't care about anybody else. And when I talk to you about it, all I get are cute teenage replies. It's going to stop. Now, understand? But Dad... Understand? Dad, we're not kids anymore. As long as you're under this roof, you go by my rules. If you want to set your own rules, go and set up your own house. But don't ask me for the money. God knows that's all you ever seem to need me for these days. Do I make myself clear? Yes, yes Dad. Dad. Fine. Uh, Mr Kelly, I might be a little bit later than 11. Do you want me to ring? <laughs> Nudge. Go home. Right. <laughs> oh, hello? Is this Mrs. Adams? Oh, good morning. My name is Betty Wilson, and I'm the sales manager for Martin Kelly Architectural <laughs> Services. Betty? I was what wondering, you... do you need anything built? <laughs> garden shed or an extra room or how about a block of townhouses? Betty, what are you doing? Uh, no? Oh, well, what about a lead art box in the shape of your own home? Um, architecturally designed, of course. It's a special we've got on this month. Betty, give me the phone. What, what, sorry, what was that? No? No, there's no history of mental illness in my family. What? Give me the phone. What? Have you gone mad? I'm, I'm terribly sorry about that. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> what did you do that for? I, I nearly had a hooked with the letterbox. What? What are you doing? Well, I'm drumming up business. I am applying aggressive selling techniques. By calling people at random from the phone book? Yeah. You cannot drum up business that way. Oh, well, why not? Everyone else does it. Uh, people are always ringing me for money. The Blind Society, the Dog's Home, the, the everyone. Why not us? Because architects don't get business that way. Oh, 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 that's all you know. I mean, look, I've got three orders already for, for letterboxes and I'm money on the A shed. Betty, you got any orders for townhouses? No, but, but they'll come pouring in as soon as I start on the bees. Betty, look, I appreciate what you're trying to do. I really do. But don't, don't you think you could spend this time looking for another job? Oh, I've got that all sorted out already. Oh, have you? Oh, thank God. That's a load off my mind at least. Yeah. Well, when you take this other job, I'll just come with you. No. <laughs> Doesn't it? No, but Betty. I mean, look, I know we... all about architects now, don't I? I, I, I learned the job. You did? W when did that happen? So I'll just come with you and work for you there. Betty, I don't know how to tell you this, but they've already got all the secretaries they need. So, I can't come with you? No. Oh. Well, it was worth a try. So, you're really going to take this job, are you? Well, I don't see what else I can do. Well, there's one thing you have to do before you finally accept. You have to talk to the kids. I know, but I don't think that's going to upset them as much as you expect. I don't know what's got into Dad. He made me so mad last night. What's wrong with you? I'm having to come home at 11 o'clock. I mean, I've never been so embarrassed in my life. I felt like a little kid. I mean, what's the point in even going out if you've got to be home at 11 o'clock? Nothing starts till 10.30. Yeah, there must be something bugging him. Yeah, well, why does he have to take it out on us? I reckon you don't know how lucky you are. <laughs> what's lucky about being home by 11? Well, at least your dad cares about what time you get home. Big deal. Yeah? My dad wouldn't care if I never showed up. And if I said some of the things you guys get away with, give me a clip over the ear. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, at least your father's around when you need him. I reckon you're lucky. Thanks, Nudge. You made me feel about three feet tall. Yeah, me too. You are about three <laughs> feet tall. <laughs> Oh, there you are. Listen, you will clean up this mess when you finish, won't you? Yes, Dad. Right, listen, come into the living room. I want to talk to you. Uh, Jenny, living room. Coming, Dad. OK, uh, sit down. OK, Dad. Where's the fire? Just sit down with the others, would you? I've got something to tell you. Look, I've had an offer from a big architectural firm. And under the circumstances, I think I should take it. An offer? What sort of offer? A job offer. I've already told Betty she'd better start looking elsewhere. You're not firing Betty. You can't. Look, I think you've missed the point here. Things haven't been going too well lately. I'm not firing Betty. I'm closing down the business. Why? Because there isn't any. You mean you won't be working from home? No, but I'll be here in the evenings. 
But you guys don't need me around here anymore. I do. Yes, I know, dear, but we'll, we'll do something for you. We'll, I'll get in a retired lady in the afternoon to look after you. I'll be able to afford that. I don't want a rotten old lady. I want you. Yeah, and so do we. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> you guys don't need me anymore. Yes, we do. We need to know you're here. But, Dad, look, we might not need you for the little problems anymore. I guess we are growing up. We still need you for the big problems. It just wouldn't be the same if you weren't here when we get home. You mean you don't want me to be rich and successful? No. And, Jenny, you, you don't want me to take you on holidays like your friends? No. Well, what do you want? We want you here. Well, I've done it. You rang them? Yes, I said thanks for the offer, but no thanks. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, and don't worry, Mr Kelly, something else will turn up. Something already has. They made a counteroffer. I can work from home and do consultancy work for them. They oh. really need me. Oh. Everyone does. Nudge, what are you doing here? Eating, Mr Kelly. Well then, Nudge. Go home. Right. <laughs> ah, it's good to have things back to normal, eh, Mr Kelly? <laughs>